you know, protesters are still harassing Supreme Court justices at their homes. Yes, it didn't just end last year with the Dobbs leaker, though. Last month, Justice Samuel Alito said he thinks he has a pretty good idea of who it might be and that it definitely wasn't a conservative. Now, one main target continues to be Justice Brett Kavanaugh, who had an actual armed assassin arrested near his Chevy Chase address in fallout of the Dobbs case overturning Roe last year. Even NBC News is now forced to ask the obvious question, free speech or federal crime? It's a federal crime to try and intimidate a juror into ruling the way you want them to or to otherwise otherwise interfere or obstruct the administration of justice. And that seems like what's going on right now. Now, back in 2020, Senator Chuck Schumer threatened Kavanaugh that he had released the whirlwind and would pay the price. Then Biden took office and immediately put together a commission to investigate the possibility of packing the Supreme Court. Taking it up another notch, Democrat Congressman Mondaire Jones of New York thundered from his perch last year, quote, if the filibuster obstructs us, we will abolish it. If the Supreme Court objects, we will expand it. And we will not rest until we have taken weapons of war out of circulation in our communities each and every day, end quote. And this brings up now brings us up to speed with today, where Democrat Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut on the Sunday show Meet the Press made this threat. If the Supreme Court eventually says mm -hmm. that states or the Congress can't pass universal background checks or mm -hmm. can't take these assault weapons off the streets, I think there's going to be a popular revolt over that policy. A court that's already pretty illegitimate is going to be in full crisis mode. And what would you know? Today, the Supreme Court is denying the National Association for Gun Rights request for an emergency injunction against a so-called assault weapons ban in Illinois. That means the law can temporarily go into effect while lower courts deliberate. The law bans semi-automatics with a capacity of greater than 10 rounds for long guns and 15 rounds for handguns. Specifically named by the legislation is the AR-15. The law doesn't require such weapons that have already been purchased to be turned in, but who knows? That could be where this is heading next if the courts don't intervene to protect gun rights. Join us now to discuss as economist and world-recognized expert on guns and crime, Dr. John Lott, the president of the Crime Prevention Research Center. Dr. Lott, thanks for joining us tonight. Great to talk to you again. Thanks for having me on. Great. So as the Daily Caller writes, quote, they say, citing New York State Rifle and Pistol Association Incorporated versus Bruin, a Supreme Court decision issued last summer that struck down New York State's concealed carry law, the groups argue that the case is exceedingly simple. Illinois' law is clearly unconstitutional, end quote. So do you agree with their assessment given the, given the precedents we got, it, we got from Bruin last year? I think eventually it will be struck down. Uh, with the court Supreme Court likes to do, though, is to have the lower courts put together all the evidence on the issue. And they like to hear cases once there are splits between the different circuit courts. Uh, we're still early in the process here. Uh, it's a kind of a, and in fact, uh, Alito and Thomas today uh, put out a note just telling people not to read too much in uh, to this decision because, uh, you know, they want the normal process to go forward. Uh, but there's a, a time game that's going on right now. You have, uh, at the end of the next administration, Thomas will be 80 years of age. Uh, Alito will be 78. Uh, so you're talking about just six years from now. And uh, it often takes five, six, seven years for cases to eventually get to the Supreme Court. And so I think part of what's happening is that Democrats think that maybe if they can delay things long enough, and they control most of the lower courts. Uh, right now, by the end of this next year, uh, Democrats will have about 64% of the district and circuit court judges in the country. If they win the presidency next time, they'll probably have something in the high 70% range. Well, that's definitely a lot to think about, you know, as you were saying with their ages and who knows who could be picked to replace them on the Supreme Court if and when a case like this does make it up there. It could be several years from now, as you're saying. And when it comes to Illinois with this, you know, law that they've passed and now I guess can temporarily take effect, of course, they're calling it an assault weapons ban. And of course, we see the left, they weaponize that term all the time. Do you think that this is a misnomer, to put it lightly? <laughs> 